Happy, happy, happy new year. It is 2024 and we have entered. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for giving us another year. In this year, the Lord demands order in everything we do. Order in our service to the Lord. Order in our service to other human beings. What is this year going to look like? Why is the Lord talking about order in this time? That is what we're talking about today and we are starting right now. 2024 is the year of order. When we say order, what exactly are we talking about? Order is defined as the arrangements or disposition of people or things in relation to each other according to a particular sequence, pattern, or method. Brothers and sisters, you need to understand that our God is a God of order. And in this year, 2024, He demands order order. If things are not in order in the house, it means that there is disorder. When there is disorder in the house, it becomes very difficult to locate things in the house. Do you remember the parable of the lost coin? Let us go there. St. Luke Chapter 15, verse 8. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she finds it? You have to understand that the reason she was sweeping the house is because the house was already in disorder. The Bible says she lit the candle. That means that you you, you can't have order in your life without light. I mean, how do you look for something in a dark room? What are the chances of you finding that thing where there is no light? That's why the psalmist of old says, thy, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Order simple means you need to have light for what you are doing. Like that woman in the parable, she looked for her lost coin because there was disorder. Some of you have lost health due to disorder, some kind of disorder in your body. For some, it is financial disorder. Don't struggle with financial disorder. Just introduce order. For your information, there is no financial order without putting God first. The Lord demands order, especially in this year. Let us continue with this. The Lord assured us that he will send Elijah in the last days who will usher in order. Malachi 4 verse 5 to 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. My God, these two verses we just read are very loaded, but we shall unpack them. The first thing we see in the text in the text is that the dreadful day of the Lord is surely coming. The dreadful day of the Lord begins with rapture and all the judgments connected to it. The Lord is telling us that before the day of the Lord comes, Elijah the prophet will come first. What is Elijah going to do? He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. That is, Elijah will bring in order back to the people of God. Notice if things continue as it were, there will be a curse. He says, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. Curse will follow disorder. God wants order first before the day of the Lord. Otherwise, he will not find faith in the earth when he comes. He says the hearts of the father will be turned into their children, both spiritually and physically. The, the sons will discover that they won't be able to operate without their fathers. From 2024, you are going to see many fathers looking for their sons and sons looking for their fathers. When fathers and sons come together, this is called unity of faith and order. That's why Apostle Paul says, Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto a measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is the kind of order God is looking for from 2024 going forward. God certainly wants order in the way we serve him. When Moses was about to build the tabernacle for God, he had to follow the pattern. 
Exodus 25, verse 14. He says, See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Do it according to the set pattern. Follow the prescribed order. Some people don't even care what God thinks about the way they are saving him. You think he gave you the Bible for nothing? I mean, really now. One day as the Lord Jesus was doing the work of the ministry in the desert, the disciples of the Lord thought to send the crowds away because it was late and that there was no food for the crowds. The Lord insisted that the disciples should give the people something to eat. Can you imagine more than 5,000 hungry people waiting to eat? How do you deal with that? How do you organize them? But praise be unto God. My God is a God of order. The Bible says in Mark 6 from 39 to 42, Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on, a green, on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. Hallelujah. When there is order, a miracle can take place. Did you hear that? Let us go to the church in Corinth. This church was gifted. I mean, this church was anointed. Apparently, someone would be singing while the other one is prophesying and the other one is explaining his dream all at the same time. There was a chaos. This church was very disorderly. And finally, Paul wrote to them and said, let all things be done decently and in order. Make no mistake about it. God is a God of order. One time, King David wanted to transport the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, and he prepared a new cart. Think about that. He prepared a new cart to carry the Ark of the Lord. Let's read about it. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 3. And they set the ark of, the, of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ohio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. Did you see that? They got the people who were marching. People who were trained, marching together with the new cart as the procession was moving towards Jerusalem. I understand there was a budget for this procession. Soldiers were trained to march with the new cart. But was this not the order? Was this what God wanted? What were they supposed to do if they needed to transport the ark, the ark from one point to another? You want to know? Numbers chapter 4 verse 50. When Aaron and his sons have finished covering the sanctuary and all its furniture, as the camp sets out, that means as they are about to move to transport the ark of God and other holy things, after all that is done, but not before, the sons of Korath shall come to carry them using poles so that they do not touch the holy things and die. Because if they touch, they will die. These are the things in the tent of meetings, tabernacle, which the sons of Korath are to carry. Did you see that? Do you see how the ark was supposed to be carried? The ark of the covenant was supposed to be carried by four priests using poles in their shoulders. But David put the ark on a new cart that was disorder. And God was already angry about this. All right, let's continue with this. Second Samuel chapter 6, from 6 to 7. And when they came to Nakoth's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. The, 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 the cart was shaking, all right? And the ark began to fall. The Bible says that, and the anger of the Lord was Handled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. Now, this is serious. Lord, help us to walk in order. I told you the Lord was already angry, but was waiting for just one mistake. What happened after this? 
Well, of course, David was not happy about this, but David went back to the scriptures. That's what you should do. No matter how disappointed you are, you must go back to the word of God in this year. David went back to the scriptures to learn about the due order. 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2 and verse 13. Then David said, listen to this, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. But last time, David put Uzzah in Ohio next to the ark of God. But God wants only the Levites. All right? He says, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. For them has the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. For because ye did it, you did it not at the first. The Lord our God made a breach upon us. For that we sought him not after the due order. In other words, we didn't do it right. That's what David is saying. Brothers and sisters, in 2024, seek the Lord after the due order, not after your own opinions of serving God. The miracle you are looking for is coming, but put your house in order first. Ship the house like that woman and you will find your lost coin in Jesus' name. 2024 will certainly have challenges, but challenges are not greater than order. Order brings preservation. Until next time, this is Bishop Judah wishing you a prosperous 2024 and of course dissolving doubts and explaining of hard sentences through the word of God. God bless you.